Okay. Um, hi. Uh, as Chitra said, my name is Viola, and um, I work for uh, TPF Software as a developer. And um, in this uh, webinar on file management and code editing, I'm going to be showing you some of the file views and the project view in CTPFGI. And I'll show you the um, text and binary editors and the file comparison tools that are built into CTPFGI as well. Now, um, there's a lot to cover in half an hour, so my approach is actually going to be not to try and show you everything, but to um, highlight a few things which I think are particularly useful. Um, we'll open up for questions at the end, and then right at the end um, of the webinar, we'll have a survey question, and if you could answer the survey question, that would be very helpful. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, just to get straight into it, um, I'm going to start off by showing you uh, the various file views. Uh, first of all, what you can see here um, on the left-hand side of the screen is the PC files view. Now, this shows you files that are local to your own computer. Um, you can Add, add directories to view, you can uh, drop them from view. It, what you can see here is I've got my documents showing, I've got my C directory showing, and then I've added to view a folder called demos, which just has a few demos in it. Uh, going to the host files view, um, I'm not going to show you a lot on the PC files view because a lot of the things that you can do on the PC files view uh, are the sorts of things that you would expect to be able to do in Windows Explorer anyway. And the things that are specific to ZTPFGI you can do in the host files view as well. So I'll show you think a bit more detail in the host files view. Uh, here's the host files view. Um, again, I have um, my home directory, what you can see here. The, the host files view is really similar to the PC files view. The difference is that you're viewing remote files. So what you can see here is, let me just collapse this, you can see I've got a Linux system here and then I've got a VM system here. So you can collect together and view uh, files and directories on different systems. Let me just reopen this and I can uh, show you. It's taking a little while to just fetch the um, directory again. One thing that um, is very useful about the way that um, ZTPFGI allows you to manage your files is that we have um, the whole system of being able to add files to view and drop files from view. Um, what, why this is useful is you can, it just enables you to m manage your workspace so that you're not having to trawl through loads of directories that you don't need to find what you're looking for. You can just add to view what you want to see and if, you don't, if you're not interested in this particular thing, you can drop it from view. Um, as an example, you can see, I've already shown you that I have a couple of directories here. Um, it, I can say, okay, I'm not going to use a VM for this demo, so I can just right click and I can say drop that from view. Yeah asks me if I'm sure. And now we're actually just looking at my Linux directory. And similarly, if I wanted to add another thing to view, I can come to my Linux and I can say add to view and I've got a directory called demo2. And it's just a way of controlling your workspace um, and, um, not, and managing it and keeping it tidy. Um, the other thing that um, I'd like to show you, which for the host files view, I mean, obviously, um, if we right click a file, let me just find a file that I can right click. Um, there's quite a few things you can do. I've just said add to view, drop from view. You've got all the usual stuff like opening with a program, uh, moving files, copying files, creating files and folders. Um, but there's a few things that you can do um, as well. Let me just go to a higher up one so you can see the entire um, pop-up menu. Uh, one thing I'd like to show you is the search facility. Um, 
I'm not going to show you this, but another thing you can do is add files and directories to projects. And I'll show you the projects view. I'm not going to actually add anything, I don't think, though. But you can rename, delete. And the other thing that's pretty cool is that you can um, compile, build, and load simply at the click of a button. You can just um, right-click a file. Uh, you can do it up here as well, but you can just right-click a file and select it, and it does it. And then the other thing that I want to concentrate on is the comparison tool. Um, so, but first of all, uh, I'll show you um, a masking feature. So let me just open up a few of these directories so that you can take a good look. Um, let's close that one. I want a couple which have got quite a few nice files in. Um, Okay, so you can see here I've got a number of um, files, and I can go up here and I can just right click and I can say mask, and I can type in a mask for the file names and it'll filter the entire view to just show what I want to see. So for example, if I just wanted to see make files, I can say um, asterisk is the wildcard and then dot. And then because I want to, and then because I want the um, subdirectories to inherit the mask, so that the mask is applied to not just my demo directory but all the subdirectories, I just click the button which says um, subdirectories inherit mask, and I click OK. And you can see that all these directories that are in this um, demo directory, they all now have a filter symbol, and that filter symbol is just telling you hey, you've um, added a mask to these. So if I just open these up a little bit again, you'll see the effect of the mask that I've put on. So now you can see only make files are showing. Uh, let's do another one. And removing the mask is as simple as right-clicking and saying mask, and then clicking the Remove button, and all your files are back again. So, um, so that's the mask. It's, it is as simple as it looks. Um, so, the next thing that I think is a pretty good um, feature that I'd like to show is the ability to search. So, again, it's as simple as right-click, click the search button, and what's really and I'm going to search subdirectories. But what's really good about this is that you have the choice of searching uh, for particular file names that match a mask or for, by searching for text within a file. Now, searching for file name within a mask, again here, I could do the, exactly the same thing and say dot make file, and that would return any make files. Um, the difference between the filter and this is that this actually returns a list of files that match the search term, and you can double click. Um, to open that file in the editor and go to that file, whereas um, the filter actually filters it within the file view itself. Um, the other side of this dialog um, allows you to search for text within multiple files. So to show you this, I'm going to actually put in um, assembler. So I'm, I'm going to do wildcard.asm and I'm going to look for CREM C. So what this will do is this will say, okay, go through all the uh, files in this directory and its subdirectories, um, look in all the ASM files and return me a list of anything with CREM C. So I'm just going to click the search text in files button and as you can see I've got a list. Now this is the output window the output window actually displays output, um, various types of output. You can see here build, error, various others, uh, message input output. Um, in future webinars, I'm sure that some of these others will be covered, but the one that's pertinent to this webinar is the find tab, because search results are, this is the tab where search results are displayed. And as you can see, I've um, it's found a few files with CREM C. Most of them are various versions of TST 5.asm, but there's another one here as well. And you can um, open these up, and inside it'll show you the line numbers 
where that they where the crevices have occurred. And you can simply double click and it opens up the file and it takes you to the line where the crevice is that you just double clicked on. And as you can see, each uh, search result is shown with a little pair of binoculars in the margin. So you can scroll through the file. You see, there's another one just there. You can scroll through the file and you can see the other search results. But obviously, probably the easiest way of going to what, where you want to go is by double clicking in the list. OK, um, let's move on now to having a look at the projects view. Now, a project is really a way of gathering together um, different files that pertain to a specific work project, something that you're working on. So um, it's really a virtual view of all the different files that pertain to, to your project. It, it doesn't um, reflect the actual positions of the files um, in your uh, directory structure. Um, but, you, it, it's, but in a similar way to the PC files view and the host files view, you can add projects to view, you can remove projects from view, um, and you can also set project variables. So uh, here we have a pro project with a variable um, set. Um, now some project variables can be set by the administrator, um, so, um, but then others can, can be user-defined as well. And the other thing is that user-defined, um, any project variable that's been defined um, can be overridden at the file or program level. So um, as, as this example shows, we've got a project with a variable called user initials. And then this particular file is overriding that with slightly different uh, value. Um, OK, uh, let's move on now to actually look at the editor itself. I'll, do, I'll just get rid of this um, output window so we can see a bit more. Now, with the editor, you can do, obviously, all the usual things that you would expect to be able to do in a text editor, like cut, copy, paste, um, undo, redo. Uh, if, let me just make a quick little change, and you'll see there, there's the undo button, and you can just undo and redo. Um, so I, I'm not going to sort of go into detail about that, because that's the sort of thing that you would expect to be able to do in any sort of text editor. And we also have things like find and replace and select um, up here. It would, and this is the same place as it would be if you were using something like, like uh, Microsoft Word or something. But um, we do have some additional features to this text editor, which are designed really to make your coding easier. Um, there are some, I'm going to just point out a few. There are a lot more than I'm going to point out, but um, I'm just going to point out a few. Um, ones that make actually navigating your code easier. I mean, this file isn't a huge file, but if you were navigating code and you had a great big file and you were trying to find your way around it, uh, and you're having to scroll up and down to different areas you want, it can be a bit um, tedious and you, uh, trying to refine where you were. So we actually have a feature which is setting bookmarks. And it's as simple as wherever your cursor is, you put your cursor where you want to set your bookmark. And just up here in the ribbon, there's a bookmark button. And you just click that, and you have a little flag appear which says, OK, you've got a bookmark in that position. And then if you're somewhere else in the file, and you're working and you think, oh, I've got to toggle between that position and this position, you can set another bookmark, and etc. And to move between bookmarks, you can just um, that, you can just click these previous and next buttons and it will move you from one bookmark to another. Uh, 
So, so that's the bookmarks feature. Um, another feature which I find quite useful is um, the code folding. This is again, you know, very useful if you've got a large file. I, I, let me just open a CPP file as well, so you can have a look at that too. But um, with cold code folding, if you have a look at, um, at the file, you can see these little minus symbols, and you can click on any of these, and it actually folds the code, becomes a plus symbol, and you can mouse over to see what's under there. And obviously, if you want to take a closer look and edit it, um, for some reason, I'm not opening my APE for a one file. Um, but uh, anyway, you can see it in the ASM file. And you can um, open up again and continue to edit. And the third thing, let me try opening an ASM file um, in this from the host files view. It could be that. Uh, my demo is not quite set up right. Okay, there's an ASM file. So you can now see the code folding in this ASM file too. And I'm um, able to show you. Okay, um, the other thing that I wanted to draw your attention to is um, this very useful feature, I think, which is the outline view, which actually shows you an outline of your code. and. Um, what's, what I really like about it is it makes navigation a lot simpler in that um, if you want to go to a specific function, for example, I want to, do, to have a look at run external test here, I just double click it, it takes me directly to that function and it's the same in ASM, um, I've got different labels and I can double click a label and it takes me directly to where that is in the code. Now, that, those are really um, features that I wanted to show you that make navigation easier. Uh, we also have various things that I'd like to show you that make um, coding easier if, uh, if that's what you need. For example, here's one. Um, this is an assembler file and as you can see here that we have different colored column markers and this just makes um, seeing where you are, which column you are while you're coding, much easier to do. These are the co actual colors and the positions of these are customizable, so you can adjust them according to your needs. And, if, and the other one that I'd like to show you, which um, is XEdit-like um, commands. If you are used to typing uh, commands and m manipulating code that way. All you need to do to use these is um, click on the line number and then you can type in your command. Say for example I want to copy three lines of code, I can just say C3 and then I decide where I want to paste them. I'm going to paste them here which doesn't make any sense but nonetheless it's what I'm going to do. And um, I'm going to hit enter and uh, the three lines of code have been copied and pasted. So that's a very useful feature if that's the type of code editing that you're used to. And the other um, aspects that I'd like to show are um, actual coding help. Um, one thing that we have is uh, inline help as tool tips. So if you mouse over some uh, macros or instructions, you actually get a little tooltip telling you what that thing is and what that thing means. Um, so there we go, load and test for this one, NTRC, um, etc. And if I actually click on my macro or instruction and I could click F1, so I'm now just clicking F1, You'll see that, um, I'm not sure you can see this actually, um, yeah, I'm not sure you can see this, but the um, browser window has opened and um, 
and I'm showing the uh, online IBM online help for that particular NTRC that I clicked F1 for. And the same is true of um, C programs as well. You can click on F1 and it will take you to the online help for whatever you've clicked on. Okay, that's the uh, text editor. Let's have a look now at the binary editor. Um, let's just uh, close down some of these things. I'm just going to drop demo 2 from view as well because we don't really need that. And um, let's open up. Th this is a binary file which I'm just opening up now. And when you look at the binary file editor, you can see that um, you have hex on one side, you have characters on the other side. If you scroll, they scroll in sync. And you can do the usual things. You can uh, cut, copy, paste, and you can change what you're viewing hex only, or you can view characters only. And what we're showing now, obviously, is hex on one side, characters on the other. And Editing is as simple as you can I, you can edit on either side, so I can type A, B, C, D on the character side, or I can come on the hex side and I can type the hex values for the same thing. And uh, you can see that the changes are reflected, the changes to one side are reflected on the other side. And editing in the binary editor really is just as simple as that. Um, I might just save these changes, I think. Okay, and um, that's it for the binary editor. But um, the next thing I'd like to show in, as the last part of this webinar is the file comparison tools. So, first of all, let's start off with the, um, in fact, I've got one prepared. Let's start off with the text editor. So here I have a file, um, and I can right-click and say compare files. I could even right-click here and say compare selected. So I can select two files and say compare. Um, so if I just right click this one, let me just make some changes first actually, it would be good to make some changes to the file first. So I'm just going to edit this line and I, I can say hello and then I will, let's delete a line I think. And I'm going to save this and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say compare. Now I've actually only chosen one file to compare. Um, but on the right side, I have the act my actual file, and on the left side, I'm going to have the same file but as it was first opened. So I'll just click the compare button, and what you're seeing here is this is the, our local revisions window which opens. So we have here the file as it was first opened, and then this is a automatically saved revision, and the more you edit it, the more you'll get automatically saved revisions which would be listed in this window here. And so what you can see here is you can see um, that when the file was first opened, it didn't say hello, but now it does. And when the file was first opened, it had an extra line in it, which um, if you remember I deleted, so that line is now gone. So. Um, what we have here as well, what I'd like you to notice is that there's a color coding wherein uh, salmon is the a single line, a line which has been altered but the line still exists. We use blue to denote a line that was there but now no longer isn't. And what you can't see here is we have green to show added lines. In fact, um, at the moment, I'm showing the file as it was first opened, but if I just, you can actually compare 
any text file with any text file. So I've actually got one here which is called TSD5A. I'm just going to drag and drop it into the left hand window just to show you a bit of green. So you can see here, this, is, this shows exactly where in the file there are changes. In, so I can scroll and you can see that, that there's a bit of green here for some, some lines that have been added. And I can scroll down and you can see that there's a few changes further down as well. And the other thing that you can do is you can actually um, merge changes from the left hand side to the right hand side. So if I click next, it will take me to the next um, the next difference. So I can keep clicking next and it takes me to the next difference and I can click previous to take me to the previous one. And if you look here, um, this file says edited. This file does not say edited. And if I wanted it to say edited, I just say move right and edited has been added. And I, and I can do this for each change going down. It's as simple as clicking um, one button just to move the changes across. And if I want to get out of there, then I can discard changes. If I realize I've made a mistake, I can discard changes. But I can also accept my changes. And um, when I move out of uh, the comparison and return to the file. You can see that the file has been changed. It, it didn't say edited before. It does now. And But there, I still have a get out of jail free clause because the file has not actually been saved. So although I have done the move across, I still have the option to cancel or I can keep the change if I want to. I'll just save that because I don't mind it saying edited. So um, that's um, a quick run through of the text edit, the text comparison. The next thing that I want to show you, which is also I think the last thing that I'm interested in showing you, is the binary file comparison. And I'm just going to again right click and I'm going to say compare. And I'm going to drag over another file that I want to compare it to and I'm just going to drop it into this side and hit the compare button. Now this is the uh, binary comparison tool. It's pretty much, um, it's very similar to the text comparison tool. You'll notice that the color scheme is the same, salmon for changed files, blue for removed files, green for added um, sorry, I don't mean files, I mean lines, um, and green for added lines. And um, the difference, of course, is that it's binary, which means that what we're showing is, we're, is, let's take this as an example, we're showing the hex, and then underneath the hex for that line, we're showing the character representation. So you can see at a glance what goes with what. And so you can see here it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but it doesn't have ABCDEFG here. The main difference between the binary t comparison tool and the text comparison tool is just that the binary comparison, comparison tool is read-only, whereas you can edit in the text one. So there's no move right or accepting of changes or anything like that. But it's a very useful tool just for, to be able to see differences between uh, different versions of the binary file. Now that's um, pretty, pretty much all I wanted to show you today. I, I mean, I've missed out, um, there's a lot more that can be done, but I've missed them out because there's a lot of things which are fairly obvious and you'd expect to be able to do. Um, I've really just picked a few things which I think are some of the more useful features. So, um, are there any questions? Hi guys, now the session is open for your questions. Uh, you can uh, just click on this raise hand symbol in your screen.
screen that's shown so that uh, you'll be unmuted to start a conversation with your uh, presenter. Our technical expert will be available to answer all your questions. Or else you can just uh, drop your questions as chat message to the organizer and the organizer will bring up it up in the question time. Um, Hi guys, like we don't see any questions uh, from any attendees. We, we feel like you almost gained everything from this webinar session. Um, as we come to the end of the session, we would like to say a special thanks to all of you for attending this webinar. And shortly, a uh, webinar call of mail will be sent to all the attendees with the link to the recorded webinar. Thank you all for attending.